energy in a room, uh, you really can feel it. And then you just have to go out there and send that along to other people, right? So I am the assistant provost at Roosevelt University. Uh, don't ask me what a provost is. I still haven't been able to find out from Wiki, Wikipedia. Uh, uh, but my job is to make sure that I uh, ensure that the university lives up to its social justice mission by becoming involved in community activities that have positive social impact. Like that, we become visible to other people as a higher uh, education institution that they might want to come to. And we know how important education is, right? As I walk into the, walking over here from, from work, um, I'm thinking a lot about what I've been through, what, I, what I'm doing now, you know, formerly I was executive director to a shelter for homeless men, women, and children. I did that for five and a half years. And predominantly, the majority of the population were there because they couldn't find a job, right? Uh, the education was not uh, primary to them at one point or another. So I commend you guys that are going to college and graduating, the right thing to do. And it's so powerful, it's so powerful to show that you made a commitment to educate yourself so that you can get out there and be part of this world economy, right? Um, another thing I thought about was how, while dealing with the families, women, and single women and women with children, I think about how we are conditioned to gender roles from an early age, right? And that conditioning takes such a, a, a wraparound in your conscious mind uh, that at times, you try to break that barrier, but inside you have not. So you cannot get out of it. And you continue to fall back into that conditioning, uh, that role that you are taught, that you're supposed to have, right? Uh, married, children, and we grow up, and we become involved in relationships, and with that, we become dependent. And so what happens is that when it doesn't work out, then now you find yourself, in, I think, in, in, in a greater uh, uh, negative uh, part of your life than a man would, right? Because we're born and conditioned to be independent and be the uh, breadwinner and all that stuff. Um, so to see this right here, I mean, it's showing that you have been able to release yourself from that gender role and have taken on that individual identity that's going to make you successful out there, right? And that's important to know, the education, the gender role, right? And then the social justice, you just spoke about it, you know, volunteering, doing things for people out there because we need to pay back what we got. Mm -hmm. See, at one point in my life, I was uh, incarcerated. I did 12 years in prison, right? And I come out and I'm thinking to myself, how am I gonna stay away from that environment? How am I gonna get away from it, right? I knew that I needed <coughs> four goals as a man to be looked at as a responsible, committed person. Those four goals were to establish a family, to continue my education, to engage in a career, and to buy a house. I knew that the community would see me as a, a responsible man if they knew I was a homeowner. I knew that an employer would see me as a committed person if they seen a wedding band, right? So I would show it flashing every time I go look for a job, right? I also, I also thought, you know, uh, I, I need to break <coughs> that stereotype that if you come out of prison, you're not going to be able to find employment, right? And just it's the same stereotype. If you come out of a shelter, you might be thinking the same way too because the shelter is an environment that oftentimes is difficult to find a positive vibe, right? You have to seek out those things. So I thought to myself, so is it true what they say? If you have a background, you cannot find a job. I, I had gotten a job through my brother when I got out, but then I ventured out on my own, mm -hmm. right? And I knew that I needed to set myself apart from everybody else because there's a whole bunch of people out there with associates and bachelors and masters, and there's all of those people are applying for jobs. So in order for you to set yourself apart from that, you have to find your niche. What is it that sets you apart from everybody else so that you are successful? So when I got into my, my job as a housing counselor, I absorbed the affordable housing homeless prevention arena to the point where I became valuable to my employer. And I started seeking out other opportunities on my own. I'm working in Maywood and I venture out onto the city, seeking institutions to partner with. And they're looking at me like, what you doing in the city? 
you belong in the suburbs, go back over there, right? And I'm like, no, no, I think we, we, we need to share, we need to help each other out, you know, we need to help our communities. What's happening here is happening over there. And I'll continue to climb as I continue to learn, as I continue to set myself apart. What are those, what are my niches? I'm bilingual, right? I was locked up, that's not a negative, that's a plus, because I know the population, right? And that's how we have to turn around our life events. I went through this, but this is what makes me special, right? This is what prepared me. It wasn't a fallout, it was a preparation for what's coming along, right? Um, so I have, I, went, I, have a, I have a background, I'm bilingual, um, I'm charming, <laughs> what can I say? Um, and I, I like communicating, I like customer service, right? I like uh, uh, helping people out, giving back, and I use all of that as I'm going through school at Roosevelt University. And it just so happened that my job and my education aligned to such an extent that I was able to be successful at both at the same time, right? And so I move on through life, going through all places, talking to people about the ability to market yourself in a way in which you're going to set yourself apart from everybody. You have a degree in uh, nursing, yeah. medical assistant, right? Um, pursuing that to the next level is very important because if you just stay at that right there, you're going to limit yourself, right? right? And you want, to be, you want to get to a point where you're going to be on a macro level management of a place. You always have to think higher, right? You also have to come across confident. So when you're talking to people, you want to be able to look at them in the eyes and let them know, I am a woman, I am powerful, and I'm here to take over. Because you are all of those things. Don't ever take that away from yourself, right? This is an example right here. You made these steps. You took this step. Nobody pushed you or forced you to do this, right? And now you come to the point where you're going to use this knowledge to get out there, right? Um, it's very important to understand that we do know that there's a glass ceiling that we oftentimes have to put up with. We understand that the gender injustices are out there and we have to put up with that too. But I, I think that we can overcome it. Hey, I overcame the fact that I was locked up. And now I'm working as a provost at Roosevelt University. Setting goals is going to be very important as well. You need to make sure that you put some goals in front of you so that you have a focus on where you're going. If you just try to navigate the system without having a goal, you're going to be all over the place. What that means, that makes you uncertain to employers. And if you need to come across to an employer like, you're here, you're committed, this is what you want. So when you do your resume, how many do you do? As many as you need to for each job. Because you have to know it. You have to show the employer that uh, I've been looking for you and nobody else. And employers can tell. If you got a resume that you're sending to everybody else, they'll, they'll be able to tell right away, right? So you have to put the time in to sit down, do the research, do your cover letter. And I hate cover letters. I hate writing, period. I hate reading. I only did it because I had to, right? But you really have to put that time in there. And when you put a cover letter together, think about yourself as how powerful you are and what you bring to the table and put that out there, you know? I always use words like driven, I'm driven, you know, fast learner, um, motivated, you know, customer service oriented, right? And all of those key words are important because it plants a seed on the employer that lets them know this is different right here. Let me call her in so that we can talk a little bit. I'm intrigued, I am interested, right? So all of those things are gonna be very important as you go out there and navigate the system. Always understand that there's only one barrier out there. From this point forward, that barrier is you. Thank you so much for the little time that you gave me, and have a wonderful life and a wonderful day. Thanks for coming. Okay, uh, we're gonna work. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>